homeless. Oh, what's good, bro? How you doing, man? Hey, 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 hey you bro. Doing? I'm yeah, not yeah. homeless anymore, bro. I found me a house. I don't go by that name no more, oh, bro. Okay. Right. Yeah, I'm Elias, man. I just go by my middle name. Like, I don't even rap no more, bro. That, look, I got grays all in my beard. Like, mm. I leave that to the young jits in my neighborhood, bro. I don't oh. even rap no more, bro. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. You don't rap anymore? Nah, bro. I... Man. Yeah, I don't rap no more, bro. <sighs> Okay. Well, I do, I'm doing other things now, writing books and yeah. just, you know, serving the community. And then I, you know, I freestyle sometimes, but, you know, I don't know. I just kind of leave it to my kids and okay, other kids. Okay. All right. But for old times' sake, I mean, there hey, it's go, just man. us. Why don't, mm. maybe just give me just a little something. Some money? Or? No, 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 oh, no, no, okay. no. I thought you were to say money, bro. Like, <laughs> no, just uh, if you want to spit some rhymes, you, okay. you got something? Let's just see. just for old times' sake. Kevin's? I think I, I think I still have something. I don't know. Let okay. me see. All right. It's a song uh, called Narrow Minds, and let me see. Wait, wait, let me see. Right. I, I might. I'm a fumble. Probably I haven't did this in years, bro. But let's see. Okay. I'm feeling it already. Yeah, this beat yeah, is like dope, it. man. I like this beat. Yeah, did a video for it. Really? Yeah, man. I did a video for it. You can check it out on YouTube. Okay. But you know, it's old stuff. Just give us narrow minds. Yeah. Okay. Shine for so we can shine for Christ. We need the Father of Light. Can do like some movements in here? Ah, uh, they can't do that move, man. Oh, kinda, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You okay. just trying to yeah, just chill okay. out. I just kind of do the hitch thing. Yeah, yeah. Do like this. Hey, yeah, rock to the side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. Mm. I'm a bond slave. I've been regenerated. New nature, new thoughts. Consecrated, I'm constantly praying like King David, the man of God, painting by that water streams. I call him dear living, I'm chasing his heart. Yes, this road is hard. My telescope is on the sun, forget them little stars. Pluto, Judah, demons, and even beauty Mars. Ah, that's enough, man. That's all right, right, all right. Hey, that was good. That was yeah, good. Man, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it seems like you got a crowd. Yeah, hey, that's my kids, man. Shit, they, they're hey. trying grace to dance. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, in fact, they're going to probably laugh at me later, but it's my kids. They're going to show daddy grace, hey, man. Hey, that was good. That was good. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, you mind if I try a little something? Try what? What you going to break dance or something? No, 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 no. I know you're super dope in comedy. Are you about to tell a joke right now, or what you going to do? No, I was thinking about maybe... Maybe I could do a little rap. I know you was a DJ. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, you yeah, did yeah. rap, man. Let me yeah, see yeah, what yeah. you could do. All right, all right. Let's see. Let's see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a beat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How about this? Yeah. 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 There you go. I could be a hype man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you'd be the hype man. You ready? Okay. Here we go. Yeah. Now here, 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 here. Yeah. Here I am in the studio. Yo, uh. yo, I'm about to get busy, about to get my flow. Uh. Yo, I'm standing right here with my bro. So why don't we get it started? Just make the light talk show. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> yo, 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 yo. Okay, okay. Yeah, you can just turn it down, down, turn it down, turn it down, turn it down. How was that? That was pretty good, pretty good, man. I ain't going. I'm gonna let you keep your hood card, but you did pretty good, man. Keep working on them bars, bro. Good. Thank you, though. Thank yeah. you. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. It's time to have some fun. Oh, light talk with Sammy Mud. We got skits and interviews. We got everything but the blues and sound. Light talk is on. Light talk with Sam Beeman. Hello, everyone. It's that time again. That's right. It's time for Light Talk. I'm your host, Sam Beeman, also known as DJ Smooth V <laughs> to some people out there. You're probably like, wait a minute, hold on. This guy's a DJ, he's also a comedian, and he's a talk show host, and he's an actor. I've also been accused of being a plumber, an electrician. <laughs> it's like the list just goes on. But hey, here today, we've got some special guests uh, in the studio, as well as, well, we're going to check in with my good friend Mike Hickman later on. Uh, but first up, coming up in just a moment, we'll have Baron Elias Clayf, And we're going to be talking about more of a heavy subject on a light show. That's right, light talk is meant to be light humor and fun, but every now and then we have to talk about something that's a little bit heavier, but we want to be able to inspire and encourage through the subject matter. So, I hope that you're ready. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in just a moment. Hi there, it's me, Shopping Cart Hunter, and I found another endangered species. I'm here at the Goodwill, and you won't believe it, mate, but I see right over there, there's a 
Goodwill Blue. Hold on, let me let you take a look here. Look at her. She's all scared and alone. She's out there waiting, waiting for someone to take her back. I think it's time for me to step in and save this poor cock and put her back where she belongs. I'll make a break for it now. Oh, there she is, mate. It's okay, little fella. I got you. Wait, I gotta be very careful. Make sure her wheels are okay. All right, I think she can make it. Let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's gonna be good, mate. I believe I can save this one. I'm gonna take her back where she belongs and put her in a natural habitat. Okay, we've made it back. I'm going to put her safely in her home. There she goes. All right. You're fitting quite nicely back there. I feel real good about that. Another cart is saved. If you'd like to check out some more of my videos, go to sambeeman.com. You're watching The Shopping Cart Hunter. And we're back. Hey, that is a fun clip. I actually got this idea one day when I was driving down the road and I saw a shopping cart on the side of the road. Of course, we've shown one of those, uh, one of those clips before, but this particular one, I was at the Goodwill and then I got inspired to do another one. But uh, usually when I'm doing these videos, it's, it's me with my phone and I'm like this and I'm holding a cart and people are like, this guy is crazy, what's wrong with him? Yeah, but hey, it's all for entertainment, right? And for your viewing pleasure. All right, so uh, I want to go ahead and introduce my first guest today. He is uh, author, but uh, he was also a rapper when I first met him. Please welcome, welcome, Mr. Elias Clave. What's going on, bro? Hey. <laughs> hey, hey, thank you for having me, man. Now, I said author. You're also a speaker. Yeah, speaker, yeah. yep, itinerary speaker, yep, yep. You know, I'll never forget when, uh, when you first came on the show back 12 years ago. This was 2008. Wow. I yeah, 2008. Mm. And, uh, you know, I think, I think I might have seen you rap. It was on location, uh, maybe over in South Columbus, uh, maybe? Yeah, probably there was so. A, there was a, was it PJ's? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was probably in the project somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was doing some outreach or something. And, yeah. uh, and I was like, man, I have to have you on the show. And I'll never forget, and you probably won't either, <laughs> when you showed up to the studio. And in those days, yeah. we had a blue screen set. Okay. And you showed up. With a blue tee. And a blue hat. Yeah, man, you messed up my swag <laughs> on that thing, bro. I was, yeah, you was, I'm so sorry. That's I, good, though. You killed my pride. Oh, well, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm actually wearing blue in honor of, of that oh, particular thank episode. thank you, man. You know, See, I, I you can redeemed wear it. it. Yeah, I redeemed it. I can wear it now. Yeah. But I, uh, I apologize for not giving you the heads up. I remember saying, like, man, if, if we do it this way, like, you'll be like a floating head and arms with pants, you know? <laughs> like, like a Mr. Potato Head or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was... Uh, and I just remember you, you were like, man, we're going to do this. Yeah. Like, you, luckily you had a t-shirt underneath. Yeah, I just took it off. I think I had a red t-shirt on under that. Yeah. And didn't you just have your hair? Didn't you, didn't you just go you had a hat. Your hat I think, yeah, something? yeah, yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Because you were like, man, I'm wearing a hat because my hair. Yeah, you it was know. blue too. Like, everything was just blue. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like, man, you messed up my whole game, bro. But it was good, man. I couldn't uh, miss the opportunity, bro. Well, I hope you don't mind, but we actually have. Uh, we have a, a clip oh, of this. Nah, we can't do that, bro. Yeah, uh, if, if you don't mind, let's go to the Light Talk archives and. Uh, you don't got nothing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, don't yeah, think I, you got oh, I got something. I don't think you oh, got yeah. it, bro. Yeah. Man. Nope, nope. Oh, oh look at that, bro. After <laughs> many years. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can turn that off now, bro. Oh, that's, okay. that's, yeah, we don't want to hear that. <laughs> Now nah, let me let me give all glory to God. It was it was still Christ centered. Praise God for what He did, man. But that, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, now I know that you don't rap anymore. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm trying to find my words here. Um, you you actually are still encouraged to rap, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my kids tell Daddy, you need to still rap and and all that. And yeah, people on my block they tell me, man, you need to drop something, man. You still got a little flavor. And all. I was like, mm, I'm thinking about that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. God, Lord is doing some other things, and so. Well, I want to hear about some of those other things that you're doing. I tell you what, why don't we take a break? Uh, cool. We'll come back in just a moment with, uh, in just a moment, in just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back in just a moment with Elias Clay. Be no more, be no more, man. We keeping it Christ in the Lord, dog. We ain't holding no dogs. We ain't smoking the bar. We ain't popping the slug. Nope, nope. Yeah, we living for Christ. Yeah, we doing it right. Hey, yo, he changing our lives. Yup. 
Yup. We ain't running on drugs. We ain't smoking the bugs. We ain't popping the slugs. Nope. Nope. I ain't popping the slugs. We ain't pushing the drugs. But I'm on the block, man. I'm pushing the rock, man. I run the clock nonstop. It's about God's love. And I'm showing it to them thugs because he changed the thugs. The Bible calls that agape love, the only love you can get from the heavens above. And he sent his son to die for us. S I N S. He replaced it with his gift and his righteousness. My life is no longer mine, yo, my life is his. No longer smoking a piff, no longer holding a fifth, no longer chasing the chicks. Nope, nope. We ain't chasing the chicks. Nope. We ain't holding on dogs. We ain't smoking the bug. We ain't popping the slugs. Nope, nope. Yeah, we living for Christ, yeah, we doing it right, yeah, yeah we changing our lives. Yup, yup, we ain't rolling no dust, we ain't smoking the bug, we ain't popping the slugs, nope, nope. Yeah, we living for Check Christ, it out. yeah, we doing it yeah. right, yeah, we changing our lives. Yup, yup. Hey, yo, my hope for y'all is that you get clean, like some white tea and jeans. The devil's trying to get you hooked to sin like crack pipe to fiends. A kiss the ice cream, a girl's a mad green. I know you struggling, I know you trying to walk this out. I know you hurting, yo, but God is our purpose. That's why I'm spitting Christ all through these verses. Cause he's amazing, man, but not Spider-Man. He gives us energy and power like Vitamin. Hey, SP, I mean, I mean, homie, you trying to tell me God give me power like Vitamin? And we're back with my guest, Baron Elias Clay. Hey. I keep wanting to call you homeless, too. I, you know. Bro, I got, I got me a house now, I know, bro. I know. I'm not homeless. <laughs> so those who don't know, man, you know, homeless was my rap name. It was actually standing for um, he heaven over money, leading endangered souls saved. You know, and you know, the whole concept, we're dual citizens, heaven is our home, but yet, you know, all that stuff. So I try to just play on words, but I, yeah, I don't go by that anymore. Now, uh, now I know we talked about this last time, but I want to I want to hit on it again. Yeah. So, uh, for everybody watching right now, you know, tell them like where you're from. You originally, know, yeah, I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I moved here when I was a teenager, young kid, and uh, yeah, my my father passed when I was uh, 10 years old. He died of cardiac arrest, and then my mom had people. People say, man, you got Brooklyn and you got Columbus, like two different worlds. My mom had an aunt and uncle for Benning here, and so they encouraged, us, her, encouraged her and us to move after my father died, and that's how we got here. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, since you're from Brooklyn, mm -hmm. now, did you play a lot of games, you know, in, uh, yeah, I like, used to. like street games and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, like, I used uh, to play like, you know, like dominoes and you know, stuff like that, okay. yeah, cards and all that stuff. Did you ever pop a, pop a water plug or anything like in the summertime? Oh, or? yeah, 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 he said fire hydrants, <laughs> yeah, yeah, all, that, yeah, all that stuff. He said, you get in trouble because you're supposed to go down to the precinct and get a, uh, get a, a little um, permission and all that stuff, yeah. It was so, so hot in the city. We used to pop it open and you know, be in the streets and playing around and all that stuff. So, yeah. And, of course, would you, and you still go back every now and then. Yeah, yeah, I go back in the summertime, you know, when my family members, when a cousin gets married or a death in the family, just to go out and give me a slice of pizza on the block. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> hey, yeah that's man. Cool. And, of course, with your background, too, mm -hmm. that, that has really helped you reaching out to people in your own neighborhood, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. So yeah, I am uh, uh, live in South Columbus, okay. yeah, which people will call the bad part of town. And so, um, yeah, I love it there. I've been there. That's the, actually the only neighborhood I lived in since we moved to Columbus. Okay. So uh, that's where the Lord found me. I had uh, like 22, 23 years old. I didn't grow up in a Christian home. Um, and so, yeah, the Lord found me in, in my back room and I was uh, living together with my girlfriend at the time and just living a crazy life, man, and I opened the Bible that her grandmother had gave her before she died. Her grandmother died of cancer, and I open it, and I read the wages of sin is death in Romans chapter 6, and I believe that's when the Lord really called me, man, to himself. And uh, then I always had the talent, you know, for, for, for hip-hop, but the Lord was like, now I want to use you as an urban missionary to go back into your context to, to preach Christ to those in the um, in, in the music industry, you know, was that, that a stuff. tough transition? You know, like doing doing uh, music like hip hop a certain way, mm -hmm. and because I'm sure that you probably talked and acted. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, yeah a, a lot, a lot, a lot of cussing. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of cussing and pride and uh, it, it was it was it's actually because uh, even when I first got saved, I didn't do I had kind of put the music down for a while because okay. I was like, man, I don't know what to You're do. Like, you, like you can't Christian do it rap, you know, and uh, my my, my uh, associate pastor at the time. He was giving me CDs with like uh, Flame and The Truth okay. and Cross Movement. And at first I was like, mm, it's cool, man. But, and I was still scared because I thought like in one of my bars I'll curse or something. Yeah. You know, it was like, and one of my homeboys was like, nah, bro, like just, you know, just, just, you know, just rap, bro. Just be you. The Holy Spirit, you know, will help you. And so, yeah, it was, it was a pretty, pretty cool transition, you know, just learning and, and how to format my words and, you know, writing down scripture and just kind of br trying to bring like a biblical worldview to the to the culture. 
And now mm. you're bringing you're bringing another biblical worldview to mm. the culture, mm. still through writing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but not in raps. Uh, yeah, through you, books. Yeah, you, yeah, through books. I'm also working on some uh, what we call gospel tracks. Okay. Uh, yeah, targeted to the urban community. I like to say biblical truth in the heart language of the people. Okay. And so yeah, kind of with you know the, my target audience is you know just uh, uh, millennials and hip hop culture, just trying to take the truths and the precious truths of the gospel and God's word and put it in the heart language where people can understand it. And your latest book? It's called Good Morning Joy, A Practical Theology of Joy for the Everyday Sufferer. Yeah. And, and this comes from a perspective mm -hmm. of, of suffering in your own life mm -hmm. and what you've gone through. Because uh, we, you talked about this just a moment ago. You, uh, you know, mentioned that your father mm -hmm. had passed away at an early age. And, mm -hmm. and this is something that they, they projected would happen to you as well? Yeah, yeah. So I was born with a severe heart condition. It's called TGA, okay. transposition of the great arteries. I had open heart surgery when I was a couple of months old. And uh, it just, it, yeah, it's dominated my life all my life. Even to this day, man, I still suffer with it. So the whole book is, in the beginning, it's, it's, a, it's a bio of my life and how I was born and, and how I came to Christ. But also, it's also practical theology of how to have joy in the midst of suffering. We're living in a day and age, especially with the pandemic, with the coronavirus and, and death. And even in my hood, man, there's a lot of, you know, drug violence and murder. And, you know, how can somebody who has all these this suffering and pain and loss, how can they still have joy? And I believe it's found in Jesus. Yeah. So, yeah, man, it's a uh, Help people go pick it up and, and hope they're inspired and by it. How can they pick it up? Is so, it Amazon? Yeah, Amazon. Okay. Yeah, it's on Amazon.com. Uh, Baron Elias Clave. Right now, we're just with, it's on Kindle. If okay. you have unlimited Kindle, it's free. All right. If you have Kindle, it's two ninety nine. Some of y'all spend more than that on Starbucks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You could get, get a latte and get my book and read it. it and it, the dope thing about it, dope means, it doesn't mean drugs <laughs> for those who do. You know what I mean? It's good, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So, so the dope thing about it is it's, it's only 65 pages. And so okay. you could sit down and do your Bible study and just write there. And you could finish probably like an hour and a half. Hey, yeah, that's so, not bad. Yeah, yep. Well, uh, is there anything you'd like to, I think we need to cut to a commercial break and uh, we'll be back in just a moment. But before that, uh, anything you want to give, give uh, to people watching? Yeah, physical copies will come out soon too. We got some physical copies. A lot of people have been asking about physical copies. Okay. And so yeah, man, just please. And, and just, when you go pick it up on Amazon, leave some uh, review comments. And just tell me what you think about it. And uh, I would love to dialogue about the idea of suffering. I wrestle with a lot of um, ideas about death and suffering and, and, and e eternity and afterlife. And these are questions that's happening in our, in our, in our world today. That's right. They're asking these questions, even in the culture. People are asking what happens after we die. And so I think it's, it's really uh, relevant to our time. That's right. Yeah. Well, Baron Elias Clave. Hey. Thank you so much. No more homeless. Don't oh, call me homeless. Okay, no all right. No homeless. No homeless. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for being on Light Talk again. Thank you, brother. It's always a pleasure having you in the it's studio. And uh, we're going to take a break. We'll be back in just a moment with our next guest. And we're back with our actors here, Casey and Don Tarius. Uh, we're going to be playing a little game called Flip the Script. So, uh, guys, you know how this goes. Uh, basically, Don Tarius will only be responding with a line from his script in this scene and so we need a suggestion uh we need to know who these guys are who are they astronauts, astronauts. okay you guys are astronauts and uh, that's all you get you're just astronauts all right so uh whenever you're ready action it's pretty cool up here in space i wasn't sure how it was going to be um especially with all the crazy training they had us do but this is kind of fun being weightless uh-huh yeah, you don't say a lot, but when you do talk, you really seem to get it. I like that. Come in. Oh, I'm in, all right. I feel great in here. There's space out there. Look at those stars. Well, well, what can I do for you? Well, you can help me contact Mission Control after we chart all the stars we came out here to chart. I know. I was joking. Will you have a drink? <laughs> I would love one, but we are in space, so we've got to eat that space food. But I got some space ice cream here. Chocolate? Oh, yeah, chocolate, Napoleon, strawberry, got all of them. No, ma'am, cherry. Oh, cherry. I have some strawberries, freeze-dried. A uh, cherry soda. Okay, freeze-dried cherries. Okay, yeah, I got freeze-dried cherries. Uh, no, ma'am, I stepped inside. 
Yeah, we're both inside. Spaceship, <laughs> doing space stuff. That's all right. I'll drop by later. Oh, okay. You're going to go use the space bathroom or something? <laughs> Maybe come back, talk to Mission Control after we insurance some stars? I didn't know that stars took up collections. Yeah, yeah, just like preachers do. <laughs> it's the paper. It is the paper. You did take a CAT scan before, like, <laughs> coming up to space, right? Oh, you went well. You would do the routine CAT scan. Uh, no, oh, well, well, well. Now, let's see. No, I don't have a dime. Okay, yeah. I, I'm not the lady of the house. I'm her sister <laughs> from Mississippi. I'm one of those poor relations you've heard about. Very interesting. <laughs> Learning a lot about you while we're stuck here in this spaceship. Hey! Floating around. Hey! Could you give me a light? <laughs> Not in space, bro! <laughs> no! <laughs> Scene! <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, that, was, uh, that, was, that was good. I, I like the way that you... Uh, <laughs> You play it cool astronaut. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that was that was a good response there. Uh, not in space. <laughs> Absolutely not. Especially. In, um, uh, okay. Well, we're gonna take a break. We'll be back in just a moment. That was a lot of fun. All right. Now we're gonna go ahead and uh, I want to check in with one of my friends out in Texas. This is comedian Mike Hickman. Mike, how you doing? Hey, what's going on, man? Hopefully my internet is good for you. It's a little sketchy out here. I live near a lake, and if, in Texas, if the wind blows wrong, it just blows the internet over the house and it doesn't get into the house. So if I, sorry, uh, if I freeze up, then uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's I, the only type of freezing we do in Texas is that's the only internet thing. freeze. Internet. Yeah. Well, and now you're <laughs> in the studio. Yeah, yeah, this is my little home studio here. It used to be a big old studio when I used to record bands and I do a whole bunch of commercials, but now it's all scaled down. It's not open to the public. I just do like voiceover work. Uh, I do some acting stuff. And so we do a, a bunch of like self taping and record my daughter's band and things like that. And my, and my podcast. And your podcast. That's right. Uh, and what is your yes. podcast called again? The Laugh Truck Comedy Cast. And you, Sam, were one of my guests uh, a year or two ago, a couple of years on there. That's Jeez, right. So that was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, thank you again for having me on the podcast. I really appreciate well, that. Thank you for having me today. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Pleasure. It's all mine. It's all mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's me. It's mine. <laughs> uh, so you do some acting. Uh, now you were in, yeah. were, you, were you done background work? What, what have you done? Uh, a ton of background work, uh, a couple of features, uh, then one lead. And so uh, the lead was actually, uh, in a movie it was the movie trailer but i wasn't in the movie but uh my wife and i were actually hired to do uh this this british guy his uh what was his name um bathroom p finkelsworth and he leads into this movie so this is what showed about uh, a couple of weeks before the movie showed on the big screen it was called ned venture um i would come on and i'm actually addressing crowds in the movie theaters and warning them not to laugh, but it's a comedy movie. <laughs> Good. And it was it was just hilarious. We filmed it in the state capitol here in Texas, and uh, did some feature work, and then a lot of background and stuff like uh, well, there's the Amazon show uh, that comes out this summer uh, called Panic, but also uh, Fear the Walking Dead. Um, there was You're also there was in some the Chosen, right? Uh, in the Chosen, I did uh, yeah. one or two episodes of the Chosen. So if you see the credits, it'll it'd be like. Um, uh, merchant number one or <laughs> guy guy with basket number three yeah I, I think I fall I fall in that category in a number of movies too but I, I I was it was an honor to be on set though and and Dallas Jenkins is the uh is the director who is uh the son of Jerry B Jenkins of the yeah. Left Behind series and so uh it was incredible just to be there and and watch him work and be with so many other Christians putting yeah go go check out the shows and you can see it for okay. free season one right now so well, um, I will definitely have to check that out. And of course, for our, uh, our audience, uh, wherever they are, wherever they're watching, <laughs> you'll have to check it out as well. But uh, I wanted to, to uh, just shift gears for just a moment because I want to check in with you and see how you're doing. Uh, I know that, of course, you do comedy, but you also speak about something 
that yeah. uh, that happened uh, a little over five years ago. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you'd like to to share uh, with our viewers. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, uh, many may not know, but a little over five years ago, five and a half years ago, our uh, our son died. He um, he was actually killed by a friend of his um, at, at his birthday party when he was uh, 17 years old. And without going into any details of that, uh, you can imagine, you know, the uh, just the tragedy and the um, you know, hard to get out of bed the next morning, hard to walk across the floor. I mean, what do you think? What do you do? You don't like, is this real? Um, and it's a, it's a hard thing to nutshell, but what I, what I tell at the end of my comedy shows for, for those is, is the healing and the, the renewal and, and about what God has done on the other side of tragedy, because we all go through, through things. The Bible says that we're going to have trouble, um, some mild, some medium, some catastrophic for many people. And when you know what it feels like to hurt yourself, then you can better help those that, that are coming behind you. And uh, so we know that we're going to have trouble. So we had this tragedy that happened. And when we were wondering, you know, what are we going to do? We know that we needed to keep our eyes on, on God. We need, knew, know we needed to uh, trust him, even though our feelings, you know, we go through different things from anger. We go into sadness, you know, we're, we're grieving in so many different, different ways. But those are the times when you have to live out what you say that you believe about God. You know, oh, I believe God is our strength. I believe he is our healer. I believe that he is this. I believe he will hold us. He's the lifter of our head. He's the lover of our soul. And it's easy to say when things are really, really good. But then when it's like, God, I need to depend on you every way that I've said that I believe you. And he's absolutely true to who he is. And that's what I tell audiences at the end of many of my comedy shows when I can share some testimony that if you smile tonight, if you laughed, if you grin, you receive, you receive some strength from the Lord because yeah. the joy of the Lord is our strength because we didn't have any joy. We didn't have any happiness. We didn't have any strength, but suddenly it started coming. And then, then God says, now let me reveal some purpose. I know you're hurting and I know this is a tragedy and I know you lost your son, but we, we see, he showed us that, that we actually had a gift for 17 years. God didn't take our son from us. How can you serve a God that would take your son from you? He didn't take, he let us have this gift for 17 years. We could have never had him at all. And that would have been the bigger tragedy, but God does things like this. Let me give you two, two quick examples. I was about a year afterwards. I was, I was jogging uh, down the road and I was having a particularly hard day. And it was, I was just missing him. I was like, God, I need to hear from you. And he knows in my, in my ADD way and way he, he's got to, he's got to show me some, some in a really unique way. I'm like, God, I need to hear from you. I need some comfort right now. So as I'm jogging, I see something shiny on the side of the road, right? So an ADD guy, I see something shiny. I'm going to go over to it. I'm like, what is this? But I really, I really felt drawn to it. And I was just about on the, I was on the edge of tears. And actually, I think I was crying as I was jogging. And uh, I'm sure cars pass and say, what's wrong with that guy? But I walk over and I see this thing shining on the side of the road. I'm like, what is this? And it was a car uh, side mirror that had been knocked off and into the grass. I'm like, why am I looking at this? And the, the mirror part was reflecting up. And as I leaned over, I saw that it was reflecting the clouds. It was reflecting basically heaven. And I'm like, okay, that's neat. That's, you know, where, where my son is. And that's where where, uh, you know, God dwells and, and we're going to be there. Okay. I see that God. But then he said, look down. And so I looked down at the bottom of the mirror and it says objects and mirror are closer than they appear. I was like, Oh God, what a neat way to show me that it's just going to be a little while. We're just here for a little while. And, and he said, you know, in my spirit, I heard your son is alive just somewhere else right now. He, he's doing life in heaven right now, the same time you're doing life as you're y'all are both doing life. He's just somewhere else for a little while. And then you're going to get to go there. The best part of that is we'll be, you know, face to face with Jesus too, all together. Um, likewise, I'm like, and then I started laughing and running home. I couldn't wait. I still have the mirror and, and showed my wife and we just rejoice together. And that's how God brings about healing. He's like, let me show you the bigger picture of some things. You know, he fulfilled this purpose and other people came to know Jesus because he died. My son would give a nod to that. He, I'm sure he'd be like, I would die if, if it, that's what it took for that guy. And, um, and so 
the first Christmas came about a couple of months later. And it's like, wow, I'm looking under the tree and I start crying because like, there's no gifts for him under the tree for the very first time. Mm -hmm. I see things for my wife, my daughter, for me. I'm like, there's no gifts for him. And I thought, how sad. And then God said, hey, Mike, guess what? What kind of what kind of things could you get him at Walmart that would compare to what he has right now? <laughs> I'm like, wow. Then he said, you know, on earth, you are celebrating the birthday of my son, Jesus. So I'm like, yeah. He goes, but your son is at the party. <laughs> you know? I'm like, wow. <laughs> and so what was a tragedy Christmas became a rejoicing Christmas. Like, man, he's graduated. He just got there before us. I'm almost <laughs> mad at him, you know, <laughs> but I'm, of course not. But but God reveals himself in these loving, cool ways. And he lets us wail and cry. There's times I'd go out in the field and I would wail. And um, uh, when I tried to wonder, how am I going to do comedy again after this? I, I had to cancel a, a, a tour date that weekend with some friends of mine. Um, it was a... Uh, uh, Scott Smyer, who I think you know, and Kristen Weber, yeah. we were we were on the Texas Comedy Tour. I'm like, guys, there's no way. And they're like, we totally understand. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but the first the first time back, it was a, a church in Gatesville, Texas. And I'm like, okay, I believe God wanted me to do this. It was just about four weeks later, and uh, I said, I'm supposed to do this. I said, but at least it's a church I've been to before, and uh, they have a good sound system. They have about a thousand people in their crowd. They know my comedy. It's going to be great. So I get there and they said, oh, you're going to be on a flatbed trailer outside. It's after church. It's the middle of, it's a, uh, it's summer or late fall, uh, early fall. It's hot. So all the things that I was wanting to take comfort in <laughs> that would get me through was ripped out. Uh -huh. So the only thing I had to depend on was God to do what he wanted to do through me. And so I'm about to go up on stage. There's no monitor. There's nothing like that. And I do a lot of music in my set. And right before I went up, the youth pastor who didn't know our story said, hey, Mike, uh, you're, uh, your son's in band, isn't he? I'm like, why would he say that right then? <laughs> and I said, well, he was, but uh, he, he died a few weeks ago. Yeah. And uh, he went, I'm so sorry. I said, no way. God's going to do something cool. And I saw his wife and my wife praying over there at the side. And, and I'll, be, I'll be brief with this because I, I know there's so much time. There's so much we could say. But I walked up on stage just trusting God, you've got me here for a purpose. And when I got up on stage, I flipped one of the main speakers around. There was my monitor. They, uh, there was a field in front of the trailer and the closest the people were, were in a tent about 50 yards away. And you knew in comedy, you know that the crowd has to be close. That's right. You, you lose them. Well, as soon as I got up there and started, all the students and teenagers who had seen me there before came and sat down right in front of the trailer and filled in that gap. And I tell you what, I didn't feel any heat. I didn't feel hot. I wasn't nervous. The comedy bits were just coming to me as if someone was doing them through me, which was true. <laughs> and when I got off the stage, I went to my wife. I said, God showed me a lesson today. It really is him. When you're called by God to do something, sure. how, can we dare, how can we dare think it's us? Mm -hmm. we are the vessel and we're willing and we have our personalities and, and the way things come out, but it is God working in us. And he showed me Philippians two thirteen that says, for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Uh, then he said, now you do know what it's like to hurt. You know how many people out there are hurting. They need to hear what healing and, and joy um, uh, sounds like. And, and, your testimony is going to be used. And so since that time, countless numbers of people said, well, it was just in, in Houston, not just a few months ago, someone said it was tonight. I, I did a comedy show and they said it was tonight uh, that our daughter died two years ago. And we didn't even know if we could come tonight. And you gave your testimony about what God has done. That's what we needed to hear tonight. And, and so it, it's all about God. It really is. Our son is alive somewhere. Uh, in heaven right now, we're going to get to see him again in a little while. In the meantime, we're just to move forward, press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called us heavenward. Mm -hmm. And it's his joy and his strength that will see us through. And that's how we can go on after tragedy. And there's so much more to say, but that's, 
Hey, I, I appreciate you, uh, you just checking in with me to be able to share yeah. your story and, uh, and hopefully for our, our viewers out there that are watching, uh, they're getting a lot of inspiration from this. There are people that are so. struggling right now. Uh, and I know that they're watching and they're thinking about their current situation uh, or they're thinking of something that probably happened five years ago or 50 years ago. Like we don't know, but I, I can just really appreciate you sharing your heart. Uh, Absolutely. You can feel, feel the love and, uh, and, and just, just how raw uh, those emotions are just like coming right through you mm. and, uh, and the Lord's spirit. So we just want to uh, just thank you. And, uh, and I want, I want you guys to be able to check out Mike Hickman's comedy. Uh, yeah. Mike, how can they, uh, how can they, uh, get in touch with you? What's the best way? Uh, the central hub is going to be, uh, Mike Hickman comedy.com. Uh, you can also, you know, facebook.com slash Mike Hickman comedy, Mike Hickman comedy on Instagram, uh, IGTV. Um, uh, then my podcast, you can find that just laugh track comedy cast. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, just look up Laugh Track Comedy Cast, and there's a lot of guests, and uh, everybody, y'all can hear Sam on there also. Yeah. And uh, But MyCapemanComedy.com is the website, and from there, you can bounce to anywhere. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Mike, we're going to go ahead and uh, cut for a break here. But uh, thank you again for joining us on the show. Be sure to check out Mike Hickman Comedy, and uh, let him know what you think about, uh, about his, his testimony, about him sharing his story, his heart. Uh, maybe you'd like to send him a nice letter um, of encouragement. But we'll be back in just a moment. So for those of you who just came in, they are cheering for you. Yeah. I mean, that is, yeah, you should, yeah, you should yeah. What's your name, sir? Wave in the back. What's your name? Ridge. 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 Ooh, that is awesome. Ridge. Yeah, okay. Thank you. No, I'm kidding. But I started wondering, like, uh, where did he get those noises, right? You know, like, I mean, when you think about it, he was he was recording his songs in a recording booth. So I started thinking, like, was there some sort of spider tickling him? You know? I mean, can't you see it? All right, Tia, go ahead. Hit that track. so much fun on this edition of Light Talk. I hope that you've enjoyed yourself. 
I know, I know it was heavier than usual, but hopefully your spirits have been lifted. Hopefully you've been entertained, but you've also been encouraged. I know that death is never an easy subject. I was at death's door just, well, five years ago in 2015, when all of my major organs were shutting down in the hospital and nobody knew what was going on. And then they found out that it was cancer and it was stage four. So they didn't know if I would make it. They didn't know if it would be six months, six days, six hours. But my prayer was, Lord, if you give me the opportunity to be here, I will serve you any way that you want me to. And here I am hosting this show. So I'm very thankful for it. And I've lost a lot of people along the way. A lot of people I was connected to through cancer. Uh, because those of you who are watching right now that are battling cancer, you know exactly what I mean. They are friends of yours, they are family members of yours, that they may be suffering, they may have already passed on. But the one thing that, that God showed me through it all was that we can have joy in the middle of the storm, and we can also let those who have gone on before us live through us. We can let their legacy live on by just taking one little thing Maybe it's a, a joke. Maybe it's a smile. Maybe it's the way that you fidget your hands, your fingers, your, your toes. And someone asks, hey, why do you do that? And you say, well, there was someone really great before who did the exact same thing. And so you're able to tell about that person and let their legacy continue to live on. So I'm your host, Sam Beeman. We thank you so much for watching. Take care and God bless.